as a child, we deserved to have safe people. We deserve to have safe parents, safe siblings, safe older siblings, safe caregivers. We deserved to have safe people in our lives. But when you were brought up in a toxic, dysfunctional family, a family full of narcissists, you did not have any safe people in your immediate family. The safe, excuse me, the safe people that you had were people that were outside of your family. And one thing you got to recognize is that when you grew up in an environment and in a family and you lived in a household where there were no safe adults around you, there were no safe people around you, you were in constant survival mode your entire life. You Before you even knew what survival mode was, you were already in it. You couldn't, you weren't even aware that you were in survival mode, but you were because your body naturally was protecting itself. Your body was naturally looking for danger, spotting out danger. You weren't supposed to grow up in an environment where no other person, no other adult wasn't safe. That's not a good environment to grow up in. And a lot of times when you are the youngest or you're one of the younger siblings and you have older siblings that were not safe people, especially if there's like a large age gap between your older siblings and you, meaning like you guys are like decades apart, you know what I'm saying? Where like they were born in one decade, you were born in another decade. Y'all are damn near a generation apart, bro. Majority of the time you are. You know what I'm saying? These are the people where you like you're a Gen Z, but you had millennial siblings. Or if you are a millennial and you're the youngest, you had Gen X siblings. You know what I'm saying? So the thing is, if you had that experience where you were like one of the youngest siblings and you had age gaps between you and your older siblings and they were not safe, there was no adult that you really could lean on. There was no adult that you really could trust. And it's sad and it's unfortunate because when your parents were being negative and nasty towards each other, you wanted to lean on your older siblings. But if they weren't there, and the thing is, sometimes you can have moments where maybe when you're when you were younger, when you were a baby, when you were a toddler, before you even had memories and recollection of these moments where you may have had an older sibling that may have taken you away because your parents were arguing and took you into another room to protect you, to hide you away from your parents fighting. And that's great. They did a great job when you were a baby, when you were a toddler. But what about when you actually were an adolescent? What about when you were a preteen? What about when you were a teenager? Where were they then? Because a lot of times what happens is the same way that narcissistic parents, they love and be lovey-dovey all up on their child when they're a baby and toddler. And then once the child grows up, they lose interest. It's the same thing that happens with the older siblings. Once the... You know, once the younger sibling reaches adolescence and they reaches and they reach their preteen years and they have a voice, they can speak up for themselves, they have their own personality, then all of a sudden these older siblings, they want to start having such disdain and such disgust for the younger siblings and that's where the abuse gets worse. That has happened to me. Whereas I've gotten older, it's like the abuse got worse. I used to be very, very close with my older two siblings growing up but after a while once i got older once i became to get more mature once i started having my own voice then it's as if the the competition set in it was as if they were competing with me and always in competition with me instead of them being one to you know be an influence to be someone that could protect me it was no reason for older siblings it was no reason for my older siblings older sister to have such competition towards me when we're 10 years apart you're 10 years ahead of the curve why the fuck are you competing with me when i'm 10 years younger than you and that's exactly why i have at this point surpassed her in life because she spent so much time of her years looking back trying to compete with me when I eventually caught up to her and passed her up because she was spending so much time of her life looking back, finding ways to compete with me, finding ways to sabotage me, constantly getting in my lane, trying to throw things in my path to stop me, to slow me down, to mess me up, to sabotage me, that eventually she got in fucking last place. Imagine. 
imagine that you're playing Mario Kart and there's like and you're like in third place and someone else is in first place but imagine if the first place person they they're in first place in Mario Kart but they stop they don't drive or they're spending so much time trying to like you know throw bananas or throw other things just to like slow somebody down but they're not moving forward eventually third place you're gonna catch up and now you're in second place now you're in first place and then more people are gonna keep passing that person over and over and now that person went from first place to last place dead fucking last and they have nobody to blame but themselves because they spent so much time trying to stop people that were behind them instead of continuing to move forward because when you have older siblings that are in competition with you, constantly trying to sabotage you, it's like not only are they not a safe person, but they are a big fucking bully. Like, you know how you have bullies in school? You got the mean girls. You got those that clan, that clique of girls that are just so mean and nasty and rude. And you got to find ways to avoid them. Like, you're, I'm just trying to go to school, go to my classes, trying to go in passing, trying to go to gym class, trying to go to lunch. I'm not trying to deal with you all. But sometimes these those bullies, those mean girls will go out of their way to find you and come fuck with you. They'll come up to you with your locker, come up to you with the gym, come up to you in the lunchroom. Like, leave me the fuck alone. I'm just trying to do my own thing, trying to be myself. And uh, like, imagine how frustrating that is. And when you have narcissistic siblings that are older than you, that are in constant competition with you, that's exactly how it is. You're at home, <clears throat> excuse me, and you're constantly dealing with someone just constantly trying to compete with you, constantly trying to sabotage you, constantly just bullying you and chastising you and aggravating you and just being fucking mean to you. Your home is supposed to be your safe haven, your sanctuary, your safe space. And if you can't even have a safe space because you got bullies in your own household, how the fuck are you going to be able to thrive? It was ridiculous because it was like you couldn't even just be yourself. You know how bullies, they pick on you when you're just minding your own damn business? That's what it's like when you're growing up in a narcissistic family. I'm telling y'all, family, it will be times when I'll be sitting there playing my Nintendo DSi. Okay, I'm from a generation where you had the DS game. I had my Nintendo DSi and I'll be sitting there playing it because that was my special interest. I would play Mario, Mario Kart, Super Mario 64, and Mario Party. Those are my favorite games to play. In case she wanted to know but anyway i'll be sitting there playing my ds not bothering nobody in my own fucking zone <clears throat> trying to release my stress trying to get my dopamine and then they would start like the oldest sibling would come around and start fucking with me would start making fun of me would start mocking me and then i would say something back to her and now she's telling me to shut up now she's now she's flipping me off so I would get to telling her to shut up and I would get to flipping her back the fuck off. And it was just a constant just struggle because it's like, girl, you're 10 years older than me and you're acting like you're my age. You're supposed to be my big sister. You're supposed to be the oldest. But yet all you want to do is fucking be mean to me. And then she wonders why to this day I don't like her, why I don't fuck with her, why I have zero respect for her, why I don't want her around, why I want nothing to do with her, because why else would I? What exactly have you given me throughout my life that makes me want to value our relationship? Our relationship has, we do we have no relationship. There is no foundation. There is nothing that we have built upon. What exactly am I holding on to? What exactly? Because what I'm letting go of is not love, is not peace, is not health. What I'm letting go of is the stress, the chaos, the problem, the jealousy, the animosity, the envy. That's what I'm fucking letting go of because now as a young adult, I've realized that the shit that she did to me was fucking ridiculous because at my age, I wouldn't dare do the shit that she had done to me because when she would, when I was 16, the shit that she did to me when I was 15, 16 years old, I wouldn't, if she was 25, 26, like I said, we're 10 years apart. I wouldn't dare do that shit at my age, you know, 15 or 16 year old. It doesn't make any sense because once you grow up and you become an adult and you mature and you realize how these people were acting when you were younger was immature. It was ridiculous. It was obnoxious. It didn't have to happen. And then people want to shame me because I don't want to deal with her. But it's like, bro, you have no idea how much pain and trauma she has put me through. I was not supposed to be traumatized by my own fucking big sister. When I see other people that have their big sisters love them and protect them and they're like, this is my baby. I wish I could have had that, but I never had it.